Ok. Posso iniziare? Perfetto, grazie. Ok, so, um, today uh, we will have three hours work on, uh, working on uh, lighting. Ok. Uh, <laughs> of course we will have a break in between the... Uh, after the first of uh, one hour and a half, um, and before switching technology. So the idea is to uh, try to uh, use lights uh, of different technologies, of two different technologies, and then try to derive some conclusion about what we, di what we did uh, in the classroom, okay? And uh, try to check if this, the way we operate today is an efficient way or not, and what, what can be the solution, okay? So, a um, few words before starting. Uh, this is the bench uh, you will uh, use in the lab. Okay, for today we have it here, but uh, since uh, next Monday it will be available in the lab. Uh, on the bench you have three PIs. One of them, this one on the, on the right, is operating on the Z-Wave uh, protocol. The one in the middle is operating with the ZigBee protocol. The other is just there for operating for uh, um, bus-based protocols. We will have uh, one demo case uh, offered by DPCino plus some other devices. And finally, here you have a, a Philips Hue bridge, okay? Uh, the lower uh, part of the, of the bench is just uh, for uh, networking, so uh, Wi-Fi, plus uh, Ethernet cables. Um, in the break, I will tell you uh, the password for the Wi-Fi. So keep it uh, reserved. It will be working in the lab. OK. Um, other things we have here, we have two U-lamps, OK, which are wirelessly connected to the U-bridge. And we have two normal lamps, which are connected to two smart plugs working on Z-Wave. OK, so this is the experimental bench we have for today. And the idea of today is to first learn how to create a very simple uh, REST client. Uh, last lesson, we learned how to create a very simple, or not so simple, uh, REST server. And this time, we learn how to create the client. And then we want to try to use uh, the client that we create for operating lights, both on U and on uh, Z-Wave, first on U and secondly on Z-Wave. And in particular, for uh, the U part, we want to just try to light up all the lights and make them uh, play a color loop, so just changing colors continuously for 10 seconds, and then shut all the uh, lights down. And the same for, uh, uh, for the Z-Wave part, except that uh, the Z-Wave lamps are just simple lamps, so we have no color. So we just lit them up uh, for 10 seconds, and then we switch them off. Um, all the code is published on the GitHub. So if you want to download the code and check it, you can uh, already do it. OK. So let's first start uh, developing a very simple client, general purpose client, then uh, that we can use for interfacing the APIs offered by the U-Bridge and the Z-Way server, OK? So the, the very first part of today is to create the client and check it. So let's switch to the development environment. Um, So today we have a couple of times, so I will try to develop everything from almost from scratch. It's not true, actually. I have the code here, just for reference. Uh, <laughs> but we, we can use a, a slower pace with respect to the, uh, the last lesson, so that we, if you have any doubts, problem, you can just ask me, OK? Um, so 
let's first create a project for us. So um, this will be for example in class lights. Okay, and we start developing our first module, which is for uh, building the REST client. Okay, so let's call it REST, for example. Finish. Is a main project. Okay. Okay, how can we create uh, um, a REST client? Basically, there are several ways for doing that, but what we need is a kind of is a way for uh, performing HTTP requests, okay? Possibly with all supported methods. So uh, starting from get and post, which are the most and going down to put, delete, uh, and patch. Uh, there are a couple of libraries doing that uh, in Python. Uh, what we use today is the URL lib in the second version which is uh, one of the most used libraries for uh, performing HTTP requests and reading responses, of course. So if you want to use the library, we just need to import it. So we try to write here, URL lib to URL. And um, since we are going to exchange, yes, just, Yes. Is it a little bit better? I don't know if I can. It's a child, this one. Yeah, it's not working. Okay. Yeah, it's not working. 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 A meno che non sia questo, però questo mi sa che è il... Provo? Yes. Ok. Non questo. Ok. Thank you. Uh, so, um, we use not only URL lib, because we need it for uh, performing requests, but also we will be exchanging data in JSON, because both APIs we are using today are based on JSON as a data interchange format. So we need also a library for handling JSON. And in that case, the library will be JSON, the JSON uh, Python module. So we also import JSON, okay? So th this is the starting point. Uh, we can decide to design our uh, client in several ways, and we can uh, prepare um, a solution with uh, several degrees of completeness, okay? But just for, uh, for the purpose of this lesson, what we need is the ability to send a request, basically, and to change the, the way we send a request uh, from get to put, basically, for uh, either reading or uh, reading statuses or putting commands onto the two servers we are interfacing. So what we can try to do is to provide a general purpose send function that uh, is able to get the desired uh, verb of HTTP uh, if we have a body, the body, and uh, the headers we want if you want to uh, convey some header, for example, just for requiring only uh, JSON uh, responses. And of course, we need the URL to which we want to make a call. So more or less, uh, we can uh, start thinking of a function with four parameters, okay? Let's try to start writing the function. Let's call it the simply send because it's just the, the operation that the function performs. And we said we want four parameters, the verb, okay, the URL, the body, if any, is needed, and uh, any header we want to apply to the request. So um, 
we can specify all the parameters as uh, parameters within the, with a default value. In that case, uh, our request will be much uh, shorter if we are just performing a default request. Um, so, for example, we can say that the method, which is the first parameter, has a default, which is, for example, get. Okay, usually we send a get request. And then we will have a URL. And the URL is nothing as default because we don't know, we don't have any default URL to which sending requests, so the default will be none. And then we may have some data to convey as a body of our request, and also in this case the uh, default will be none, no data to send. And finally, some header, okay? And since the headers can be more than one, and usually are in the type uh, header name, two dots, uh, colon, sorry, and uh, uh, the header value, we may think of these headers as a dictionary, okay? So we can say that the headers parameter is just an empty dictionary that might be filled by someone else calling this function, okay? Then, um, let's start implementing the function. First thing to do is to uh, prepare a variable for holding the response, because we are sending requests, but we want also to read the response. That either will be just okay, everything went well, or maybe the response has some data, because we are asking the status of some device, for example, okay? So we may prepare here um, a response holder, okay? And since we handle typically JSON data, the response will be a dictionary probably because we can easily convert JSON into dictionaries and vice versa, okay? So let's write a comment saying this is the response as a dictionary, okay? And so we will have response. Let's remember that it's a dictionary, just to be clear. So I just uh, put the underscore dictionary. And we can create this uh, response initially as an empty dictionary. This is an empty dictionary, okay? So it's the same as opening braces and closing braces, almost. Okay. Then, um, first operation to do after preparing the response to all the, the value we get back from the server is to check if we have any URL specified in paraprinters or not, because uh, if someone is writing a program that calls our function and doesn't provide the URL, we cannot do anything, okay? So first check on the URL, check that. Can you read or should I enlarge the character? Okay. Let me just enlarge the character. Exactly. Uh, okay. So um, let's check that the URL is not empty. So if URL is different from, okay, we can write it also without parentheses. Known. Okay. So if it's different, then we can perform the request. So. Let's right here, perform the request. To perform the request, we need to 
Okay, let me just write a, a little bit of code and explain. Uh, we need to use the URL lib library, URL lib2 library. So, URL lib2 library. And create an instance of the request object. Okay? So, you create an instance of the request object passing the URL. And then we need to pass any data we want to convey in the request, even if it's empty, okay? So, our data. And finally, any header we want to attach to the request. In our case, it's also empty by default, but we can change them by passing a different parameter. So, headers. Okay. Yes, it is a little bit slow to detect if the syntax is uh, correct or not, also in the lab, so don't be scared if initially it's uh, red, uh, because it, it's just a problem of the online uh, syntax interpretation of the clips. Um, then, what we need to do here, which is a little bit more complex, is to attach a specific method to the request, because the request object provided by the library is by default a get request, okay? But what we want to do is to provide a general purpose request where we can change the verb from get to post to put and whatever. And the only way to do that is to use a lambda expression which attaches uh, the method specification of the request object and changes it according to the parameter we receive. So, what we need to perform is this. We get the request instance. We take the get method, okay? And instead of calling the function, we just somewhat rewrite this function with the new inline function, which is identified by the lambda keyword. Okay. Which basically returns the parameter that we receive when our function is called. What does this instruction is to, let's write a comment, set the HTTP verb to use for the request. Okay? So this allow us to pass as a parameter put, post, or get, and change the type of the request we are sending. Okay. Then, once we come, yes. Actually, it's the in Python both uh, functions and variables are named attributes. So in this case, you are seeing the get function as an attribute and changing its implementation. What, sorry? Exactly, exactly. Actually, it's not a string, because lambda is a function. It's an inline function which returns, in this case, a string which is a little bit different. So we substitute the get method, which basically returns a string, which is always get, with another function that returns a string that changes depending on the parameters. Okay? You're welcome. Okay, then what we need to do now is to, once we have the instance of the request, send the request, because until this moment, we just created the, the data structure we need to represent the request, but we haven't sent any data towards any server, okay? So let's try to send data, and let's try also to prepare some variable for holding the raw result we get back, okay? So, let's write here as a comment, raw result, and for example, we can call the variable a result, and the result will be initially empty, so none might be might work. 
then we send a request, but as any HTTP request, the request may either uh, be successful or not, okay? So for example, if I send a request to a, a server which is currently down, I got an error. The server is not reachable. But also if I send a request to a wrong URL, I get an HTTP error. So what I need to do is to uh, prepare my code for handling errors, any even possible errors that may arise from sending the request. And to do that, in Python, we have a particular keyword, which is called try, that basically allows to try to execute some instruction and handle what happens if the instruction fails. Okay? And the handling part is identified by the accept keyword. So what we need to do here is to open a try section. And after opening the try section, we can actually try to send the request and get back the result. So we can write here the result is equal to, in this case, we can call the URL lib module method for sending the request, which is open URL. So URL lib2 dot. Uh, URL open, sorry. URL open, and you say here that the parameters are the URL to call, any data, and the timeout. Okay? But all this data is already inside our request object. So what we need to pass as a parameter is just an instance of the request. And that's it. Then, what happens if something goes wrong? We need to handle the error situation, the error case. And to do that, we write an accept section. And inside this accept section, what we can do is to also specify which kind of error we want to handle. Okay. And who defines these errors? Basically, the library, the module that we use. So here, if we put your lib2 dot, and we try to look at the possible error, one of the possible error is the URL error. OK? So uh, if we read the manual, the URL error is a, a subtype of an input output error. OK? Is it here? And it does say some anything more basically it provides just the details of the implementation but in general every library should document its function so we should read here how the url error works in this case the documentation is not so good but anyway it's an error and i tell you that it's the error we need to capture <laughs> so this will be url error and okay, maybe it works. Okay, so what are I'm writing here is to tell to the interpreter, please capture any error of type URL error, so that derives from calling a request on a given URL, and put the error inside the E variable, okay? Now that we have the E variable, what we can do is to try to understand what's happening. And since we are just starting to develop the client and we don't want to provide a fully uh, implementation of the REST client, we can just print out the error just to check what's happening, okay? So let's write a comment, print the error. And here we can just print, yes, the reason which is inside E, okay? So E dot reason uh, provides the reason of the error, so the description of the error which, is hap we, which has happened. Um, let's write also a comment here, uh, for example, send a request. 
Okay. Okay. Well, if everything goes well, here we have send requests, and if the execution goes over this try section, the result contains a response. Okay. So we send a request and we get back a response. So we may need to interpret the response if we were asking some particular information. If we are just performing a put, probably we won't expect any response. But if we, want, we are performing a get, we want to read the response and maybe do, that, do something with the response, okay? Just printing if we want just to read the, what's happening or maybe interpreting the response as a JSON data format. So in this case, before handling the result, we need to check if there are if there is some content inside the result. So let's write a comment here for saying check the result. Okay. And let's write a code which is if result is different from none. Okay. And if something fails, this in its ensures that the result is none, okay? So we are sure that if the result is not none, the request was uh, successful and we get back the data. <clears throat> and what we need to do now is just to handle the data. Now here we can just perform a, a simplified assumption. It's not a general assumption, okay? Uh, since I already know that actually the two servers we are going to interface are providing back uh, uh, JSON-based responses, we can assume that in any case, the response will be in JSON, okay? And therefore, we can try to directly interpret the JSON that we receive back from the server. So let's try to convert the response. We can right here decode the result, for example, yes. Okay, and then first, let's get back the result as a string. Okay, how can we get back the result? We have the result object. This result object basically works like a file, okay? It's a file open on the resource provided back by the server. And what we need to do to get the result as a string is just to call a read like uh, we would do if it were a file, a real file. So here we can just write result.read. Okay, and we get back the response as a string. Then there is one, still one warning. Um, when we receive back the, the response, actually the response will have some encoding because the response uh, is uh, pure text and the text encoding depends on the, on the system, on the, on the kind of server uh, to which we are interfacing and so on. So the idea is to try to decode the text and convert it into a noun format. In our case, it would be UTF-8. So in this case, we just write append here another call to a function, which is decode, and we pass UTF-8 as kind of encoding. This is just for interpreting the text that we receive as a UTF-8 encoded text, okay? So this is another simplifying assumption. Okay, once we have a string, we, want, we may either print the string and get the response as it is, or maybe we can try to interpret the response as a JSON. In this case, we need to exploit the JSON library, and in particular, the load from string function, which is named load s, okay? So let's try to convert the response into a dictionary, basically. So the function is json dot load s, okay? many parameters of which only the first is uh, mandatory. So we just provide the first, that is our string. So our result 
as string. Okay? Sorry. Um, then, if we just perform the call and we don't store the result, uh, the operation will be rather unuseful. So let's store the result. And this, re this result will be put in this dictionary because it's the one we want to return back, okay? So we can say response dictionary now will be equal to the result of the interpretation of the string as a JSON, okay? So response dictionary, okay? So if we get a result, then we can convert it and return it back. Now the last operation is just returning back the result, okay? So you can type here, return response dictionary, okay? Okay, so if everything is right, what we got here is a really, really simple REST client. It's a piece of code that is able to get the URL and a, and a verb and maybe some data and provide back a response as a dictionary, okay? We can test it, yes? Sorry, if you want to. If you want to convert from JSON. Yes. From dictionary to JSON. Can you just convert the dictionary to JSON? Yes. Yes, actually, what, what, what you need to do is to avoid passing through the. Oh, sorry. Uh, my knee. Um, you need to avoid uh, passing through the. Okay, that's it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's worse. Okay. Uh, Avoid passing through an intermediate string. You can just directly convert from the dictionary to JSON using the uh, JSON dot uh, um, string s, I think it's something like that. It's uh, the same method we used la last time, basically. Yeah, it might work in some cases but just in some cases. So it's better to just provide uh, the dictionary to the library and the library takes care of converting the dictionary correctly. Okay, I'm saying in some cases, this on arrays on uh, how the arrays are serialized, okay? Because actually JSON files, let's say, and Python dictionary share the same syntax, more or less. So it should work, but just to make sure that everything goes well, it will be better to use the, uh, the library, okay? Um, okay, so let's save this. Now, if we want, we can put in the main part a test for the function, just for checking some URL, okay? So one check might be trying to query the uBridge for getting some information, okay? just directly to see what happens. Um, but before doing that, we need to read the API and understand what can we call and how should we call uh, the bridge. So let's have a look at the API. Okay. For example, this is the Lights API, the, the simplest one. You can find it in, on the U documentation site. And you can see here that basically there are resources and method for querying the resources, okay? In particular, uh, if we want to read which kind of lights are connected to the, to the bridge, okay? We can call the lights resource on the API by providing also a username, so 
you can see here API. Maybe you cannot. Okay. API slash. Can you read or enlarge it? Yes. Okay. So API slash username slash lights. And if you perform a get request, you will get back a list of all the lights that have been discovered by the bridge. Okay. So we may try to see if our uh, client works or not by using this URL, providing a suitable username, and by sending it just a GET request and printing back the result. Okay. So let's try to write the test for our client. Okay. So here in the main, we could just type, if everything is right, send. Then, method, default is get, we need to send a get, no problem. So we, we, didn't we do not specify any method parameter, nor data or headers, because we just want to send a request to the URL. So we can type here URL equal to, URL is uh, slash API slash username slash lights. Okay, what we need to know now is the address of this bridge. Okay, and I can tell you the address actually. So the address is um, HTTP 192. Uh, 168, 0, and 101, okay? This is the address. Then we need to write here API. Username for us will be dog gateway, okay? And lights. And if I call this function, I should get back a dictionary containing all the lights. So if I just print the dictionary, I should see the response. Okay. So let me save this and switch network because I'm, an, I'm not on the same network at the moment. Okay. Okay, and we got here the result, which is the one provided back by the bridge. Okay, it's a dictionary. The U uh, in front of the string means that the string is unicode. Okay, and here we have the list of the lamps. Basically, <clears throat> they have a name and ID. The ID is uh, preceding the name. So we have ID 1, name, ULAMP. ID 3, name, ULAMP 2. ID 2, name, ULAMP 1. ID 4, name, light strips 1. Okay? And these are actually these two lamps, the one that is there, but it's not connected, and the strip we have yeah, in the offices there and that we will bring in the lab on, uh, on next Monday. Okay? So... This tells us that basically once we register the devices with the bridge, the bridge remembers the device even if they are not connected. Okay? Okay. But let's stop here for this part and just conclude that we created a client, a general purpose client, because depending on the parameter we send, we can perform whatever we need to perform on the server. The only assumption is that we are receiving JSON, okay? If we want to receive other content, we need to change the client, of course, because it's just a really simple client. Okay, now, let's move to uh, the main goal of lighting up the lights with the U. Uh, the principle is really easy. We are able to send a request, we need just to check which request to send for lighting up the lights. So let's go back to the API and let's go to the part of the API that describes how to set 
the lights on. And in particular, the part is the one about the light state, which is these APIs name commands like states. So the commands and states are the same. They assume that if you send a non-command, what you want to do actually is to turn the lamp on, so to change the state of the lamp from off to on. And here, the way for sending a command to the lamps for lighting them up, for example, is just to call the API URL with your username, the lights resource, in part, and then the particular light you want to turn on, and finally, the state resource. So this URL tells, OK, get the light with a given ID and change, update the state of that light with the new value. And the new value might be either true or false. So you can see here the arguments that you can pass are this on parameter that either can be true or false, where true means on and false means off. So if I want to turn off the lamp, I need to prepare a body, JSON body. With inside, one key, on, equal to one value, true. OK? And if I want to perform, for example, a color loop, that is the one we want to perform, I can also pass the parameter effect, OK? So the light effect I want to turn on, and select which light effect I want. Actually, there are only two light effects. One is none, so no light effect. The other is color loop, so quite easy. Okay. So if I want to turn on the lamp and start a color loop, I need to send a put request to that URL, and I need to specify a body with two keys inside. One is on colon true, and the other is effect colon color loop. OK? So what we need to do now is to, uh, let me just switch the code so that I don't write uh, anything wrong. Um, what we need to do now is to write a script that uses our client and basically tries to send this command, OK? Then we can try it directly on our client, and then we can uh, wrap it up a little bit better. So if I want to turn on, uh, let's try to guess which lamp is, because I don't know. So let's assume that one of the lamps will, uh, will be uh, the lamp with ID 1. I can try to send a put request. So here I need to, as a put method on the URL, which is similar, but we need also to specify the ID, which is one, and the state. OK. And then the other thing I need to pass is the body, which in our case might be in this really simple example, a string saying on true, just to turn on the lamp one. And what we need to also specify here is the kind of content we are passing, because the put request always transports a body, which is a type. So here we need to add an header. We define the header parameter as a dictionary, so we can directly define here a dictionary with a value, which is content type. And uh, this will be application JSON. OK? Now. If we try to do this, it should turn on if the lamp one is the one connected. OK. We are not lucky. Let's try to change. 
and to check that the URL is correct. Lights ID state, okay. Is it right? Body. Oh, sorry. The body is wrong. Because this is not JSON. Because in JSON, the key should be between quotes. So let's use your double quote. Put here this and this. And then double quotes again. OK. Then. Am I connected? Yes. On uh, true, let me check if I do something wrong. Should work. Content type. Yeah, OK. It was just a format. Double quotes uh, around the key and single quotes. OK, so now the lamp is on. If we want to turn the lamp on, just we have to put the on value at false. So if we can just copy the last instruction and set here false. We can turn it off. OK. OK, so this, this was the first check. The API are working, and now we know how to send the data. And as you see, actually, I provided a JSON body as a string in this case, already written. OK. Um, now, what we need to perform to complete this first part is to write a client script okay, that does the same, just adds a new parameter, which is the effect one. But differently from, just, from this test, we want to turn on all the lights. So what we need to use is the information that we get from the initial query, where we get all the lamps, for uh, iterating over the IDs and sending uh, one on common for each lamp, okay? So that's the difference, basically. Okay, so, yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to, let's try to develop the client and then we can have a break so that it's better organized for the rest of the lesson. So, Let's create a new module. Let's call it U. OK. Um, sorry, I don't need to. OK, U. Main, perfect. In this case, we don't have to write any function because we already have the function defined in our REST module. So what we need to do here is to import our REST module, OK? And then since we want to wait for 10 seconds between lighting up and, lighting and shutting down uh, the labs, we need also the time library for sleeping for 10 seconds. OK, then we set the main uh, function. What we need to do is to send the get in order to get all the lights, iterate over the IDs that we get, which are the, the keys in the dictionary. And for each of these keys, send a put request for lighting up the lamp. OK? Perfect. So let's try to write it a little bit uh, quicker. So um, let's prepare the um, username, 
we remember is dog gateway. Okay? Then the base URL we are calling is um, let me copy it. This one. Okay. Then, um, what we can do here is to first ask for all the lights. So we need to compose the lights URL. In this case, it's just a little bit more modular. So the lights uh, URL will be the base URL plus the username plus uh, slash lights. OK? So give me the lights. Uh, I think it, uh, without, it was without the OK, yes, perfect. Then let's send the request and read back the result. So um, all lights will be equal to rest.send just the URL. So URL equal to lights URL. Okay, so we send a request and we need to iterate over all the entries of the dictionary we get back and in particular we need to get the ID. Okay, so the first part, if you remember it's here down, the first part is one which is the ID and then and it's also the key of the dictionary, and then there is a value. So we need just to iterate over the keys. So here we can write for light in all lights, okay? Light will be this part, one, okay? So the URI to call will be just the base URL plus the gateway plus lights plus slash ID slash state, okay? So this will be, um, mm, let's call it command URL equal to all lights. plus um, slash plus light plus slash state okay. and then what we need to do is just to send a request okay so here we can type rest.send and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay, that's one. And the other? I'm just committing the error in this moment. No, actually, the error is that I, I need to specify the body because we, we saw that we need a body. So I, I'm just starting to write send without the body. Okay. Yeah, I can put it directly in line. Yes. But what I want to do is actually to write it separately. So <laughs> that's it. Okay, so body, because it's a little bit more complex the, than in the other case. And we said that the body will contain on equal to true, okay? And then it will also contain effect equal to 
color loop. Okay? That's a body. Then, let's send a request now. So we need to pass here put the URL. the body and the content type. Okay, let's copy the content type from our sample request. Here. Okay. Now, if it works, we should light up the lamp and uh, set them playing the color loop effect. So let, let's try to run this. You see, they are color looping, okay? So they are changing the U, basically, continuously. Okay, but now we want also to wait for 10 seconds and stop the lamp, okay? So for waiting 10 seconds, we just need to use the time library, say time does sleep, 10 seconds, okay? And then we perform the the, exactly the same set of instruction, we write, but instead of true, we just put the value false for shutting down the labs. So we can copy everything. Uh, false. Effect uh, is no effect, actually, because when we turn on the lamp, we don't care about the effect. Um, so we can also remove it if we want. And that's it. So let's try another time. Let's fun first turn off the lamp with, the, with our test. OK, just one lamp. Can then we light the U. Now they are looping, and in theory, after 10 seconds, they should turn down, turn off. Okay, that's it. Really easy in a sense. The complex part was just creating the rest client. Okay, okay. Let's have a break, and next. Uh, Operation will be to do the same with the Z-Wave uh, server, okay? Just to check what's the difference. <laughs>